The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the hosts and creators of this program. This is the Pet Buzz. This is the Pet Buzz. Freshly collected with news, celebrity pet gossip, and the latest pet trends. The Pet Buzz gives you the latest 411 on everything pet related. Everything pet related. Hosted by pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and Dr. Michael Fleck. And here's the Dynamic Pet Duo. You are listening to the Pet Buzz, the ultimate in pet talk radio. This is our Thanksgiving episode. A few days before Thanksgiving, so you can take all the information and use it and have a best pet friendly Thanksgiving. Well, you know, I love Thanksgiving. It's a great time to be with family and friends. And of course, all that food, everybody has a favorite. Well, I don't know about you, but I got to work it off after eating all that food. My dogs get a lot of extra walks to help me with my glucose and the extra calories. But let's not talk about me. Let's kick it off and talk Thanksgiving. Let's start the countdown. In segment four, we're talking with Helen Woodward's president, Mike Arms, a dear friend about how you and your family can make a difference with pets over the holidays. Three, Trey Baj, the shopping expert, is going to help us score the best pet deals from Black Friday to Cyber Monday in segment number three. <laughs> and in two, Flex Facts, Dr. Fleck will talk about what pets can eat on Thanksgiving and how it can affect your wallet. And number one... <laughs> Number one, John O'Hurley is back with us, making us laugh. John George O'Hurley is an American actor, voice actor, author, comedian, and television personality. He is also known for the role of Jay Peterman on the NBC sitcom Seinfeld, as well as the host of the National Dog Show, presented by Perina. So, John, nice to have you back with us again on the Pet Buzz. Well, nice to be with you. I rarely hear my middle name pronounced. <laughs> I know, I know, I, you know, it's funny because I was like, I like that John George. Did your mother ever get mad at you and say, John George, what are you doing? John <laughs> no, George. No, no, because I'm actually John George Jr. Oh, uh, that, uh, that makes sense. Okay, John, you are now considered <laughs> a dog guy now. Did you envision that when you were collaborating with Jerry and Larry David that you were going to be a dog guy? <laughs> no, this whole thing came as a total surprise to me, but... You know, most of my career has been uh, kind of uh, uh, looking for something to happen out on the front porch, and it comes in the side door. Uh, and this was a good example of it, uh, you know, the story of the way that uh, this uh, whole originated back in 2002 is that John Miller, the head of NBC Sports, uh, took home Best in Show, that wonderfully funny movie, saw it over one weekend, well, actually watched it twice. He came in, he enjoyed it so much, but he came in and inspired to the morning meeting there on Monday at uh, NBC Sports and said, I know what we're going to do with that two-hour space in between the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and football. We're going to do a dog show, and they about laughed him out of the office. But sure <laughs> enough, by the end of the day, he had secured the, um, the national dog show from the Kennel Club of Philadelphia, uh, one of their shows, and, uh, and had contacted Purina, and lo and behold, Tuesday morning, made a phone call to me, and I was in L.A. I picked up the phone, and I said hello, and he said, woof, woof. <laughs> and that's how it started. Only you, John. He's turning red. Okay. Well, you know, it's so funny because it's hard to believe that the National Dog Show only started in 2002. I mean, it's really less than 20 years old, and it seems so much longer. Why do you think that is? Well, it's because I, I have a tendency to droll on. I just seem to turn <laughs> But you get to your point oh, early. <laughs> Some people have referred to me as human tryptophan on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> After the turkey and then listening to my voice drone on and on, that just about knocks them off of their mouth. Okay, so what's so remarkable is that the TV ratings have held up over the years, right? There are so many choices. Have- for- yeah, I guess. that's what they- They're after John. Anyway, (laughs) well, (laughs) okay, okay. let me preface this by saying, so my good friend Steve Griffith is the PR manager for the dog show. And he said, can you talk about the ratings? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Because the ratings are pretty steady and they keep increasing, which is remarkable. That's probably the most important point of this is that uh, 
we started off with 19 million people back in 2002, which is a pretty extraordinary number, even yeah. back then in a brand new one-off type of show. But uh, it, it, we've expanded to almost, or actually, didn't because we have some other uh, viewings of it as well now. We have over 30 million people that watch it, and that's absolutely extraordinary to think that any show could garner a larger audience than it did back in 2002. No other show has done that that I can think of. You know, Good Night on the Voice gets about uh, six or seven million people. We get over 30. So it's really been a credit to what I think is an incredible piece of programming by NBC. And also just underscoring the, the, the love that America has for their little four-legged creatures. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because that was the spot that was always, it's a, wasn't it It's a Wonderful Life always played in that spot? <laughs> That was exactly what it was, and it would get 50 to 60 people watching it every year. You know, it was a big drop-off. I, I, mean, was, I drop-off. was one of them. I was one of them. Can't, can't you see the millennials but, uh, watching that? <laughs> what, you, what you've seen is it's like, you know, watching the Christmas story every year. Well, if you've just joined us on our Laugh Fest, we're talking with John O'Hurley, John George O'Hurley, Jr., co-host of the <laughs> National Dog Show presented by Prina, which is going to air on Thanksgiving Day between the parade and football so our listening audience wants to know what's new this year so let's talk about how many dogs are going to be at the show and what new breeds and you well let you go on i'll wave a wand over that let me see what i can do uh from what i hear of our um our uh the entry audit uh we have over 2100 dogs entered this year which is i think will be a record for us uh, normally, we settle in at about 2,000, but we've got uh, 2,100 plus. We have, as of now, uh, we've got about six of the top 10 dogs in showing in the country that are planning to be there as well, which is a huge number because, you know, the closer they get to number one and towards the end of the year, the less they kind of want to show up and, and, uh, and uh, perhaps not do as well as they think they could or uh, mm-hmm. nobody wants to be second. In it's kind of like, like a that. game. A lot so of people don't realize yeah, it that. Is. It's like a game. It so people start yeah, to look at what the judges are, and can I win under the judges? And that's kind of how they pick their shows every single weekend. You know, there's no other show that will have a worldwide viewing like the National Dog Show does. Uh, so I think it's you know it's a great spot. It's a great credit to the show that this many uh, great dogs are going to show up. And then we have our brand new breed every year. Um, the AKC recognizes a brand new breed. Well, not every year, just that they always seem to anyway. <laughs> and uh, this year we have only one. But once again, it's a dog that is almost impossible to pronounce. And I think the AKC does this to me. (laughs) I think what they do every year is they say, ah, here's a new breed. Let's open up a can of vegetable soup and choose 12 letters. And let's see if O'Hurley can pronounce it. And there's also a new educational therapy dog symposium, correct? David Fry's leading Um, that up. David and I work so hard every year to include the other things that dogs do so that you don't think they just sit around in an arena or on your sofa. You know, the dogs do so many wonderful things, and David has has really spearheaded the therapy programs to really give them the press that they deserve. Dogs do such wonderful things in the world of medicine in terms of psychiatry and psychology, in terms of patient and um, assistance for uh, canine companions, for quadriplegics that, uh, you know, they need their therapy dogs. to They need their dogs to be by them, to be the other, you know, their hands and their legs uh, in many cases. Um, so it, the dogs do such wonderful things. And, of course, of late we've seen the wonderful things they do in the military. Now, as a side note to that, um, I recently was working with the military in Canada up at a fundraising event, and part of it was um, uh, working with the uh, the Malamutes that they have, the Malamut, the uh, Belgian Malamut, the, um, which they use as uh, dogs in addition to the German Shepherds, and they wrapped me up in that quilted protection suit, <laughs> and they let the they let the dog on me. <laughs> I know, I know. You don't want to miss the dog show. It's going to be fantastic. You got to give us the four one one. Where, when, and what network? Ah, NBC, all across the country at 12 o'clock, 12 till 2. As usual, John, we want to thank you for joining us today and entertaining us today, too. (laughs) My pleasure. That was great. So John O'Hurley, co-host of the National Dog Show, presented by Perina. What a great guest. You don't want to miss the dog show. It's going to be fantastic. Well, next up, celebrity pet news and flex facts.
You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We would love to communicate with you via social media. Use the Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. When your doctor recommended omega fatty acids as a daily supplement, he told you that they promoted better heart, brain, skin, joint, and immune system health. Well, doesn't it make sense for your pet to have the same health benefits? EpiPet Whole Fish Treat, an all-natural smoked fish supplement, is 100% bioavailable, bringing your pets the nutrients they need to keep them healthy and happy. We first heard about EpiPet at our local rescue shelter where our family adopted Lucy, a 10-year-old yellow lab. She was in tough shape, but we noticed within just a few days how soft and thick her coat was getting. She has more energy now, loves to chase her favorite tennis ball, and most importantly, how happy and healthy Lucy is now. We could not be happier. Thanks, EpiPet. To order better pet health for your dog or cat, just visit epi-pet.com. That's epi-pet.com. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Pet Buzz this morning. This show is hosted by the Dynamic Pet Duo. I'm pet trendologist Charlotte Reed, and this is our Thanksgiving episode. (laughs) Well, let's talk about celebrity pet news. Well, just like you, I'm a celebrity pet watcher. I will be visiting all of my favorite celeb sites to see what they're doing with their dogs and cats and other animals. But really, celebrities are just like us. So snap lots of pics of your pets over the holidays and post them on our social media channels. We want to see you and your pets enjoying the family as well as the food and all the great fun that you can have over the holidays. (laughs) And now, what you guys have been waiting for. Welcome to Just the Facts. Just the Facts. Fact or fiction? Just the Facts, ma'am. You want answers. I want the truth. It's going to take long. You got the time. Flex Facts with Dr. Fleck. Hi, Dr. Fleck. Hello and welcome this Thanksgiving. (laughs) You know, it's interesting. So so many of us consider pets to be family members and want to include them in the holiday celebrations. But having them enjoy the holiday meal can be a bit tricky. Yes, it can. So if we indulge our fur, feathered, thin, or scaled skin friends, they can become ill. So today (laughs) we're going to talk about what pets can eat from the Thanksgiving table. So let's talk turkey. Can pets enjoy the family bird? Some of the bird, yes, they can enjoy. Okay. So should we serve white meat, dark meat to our dogs and cats? White meat, please. Okay. So it should, maybe we should, should we think about maybe getting a turkey breast because, and just with no spices? Because a lot of times we put poultry seasoning and lots of butter and make it yummy and crispy skin. Yeah, that's maybe what we should do, but most people are going to go with the whole the whole turkey, bird. yep, the whole bird. You love turkey. I do. Okay. I can't wait. My mouth is just watering for it now. I know. And so are our pets. Our pets, too. Okay, so what else can we have from the Thanksgiving table? What about veggies? Veggies. Okay, just plain veggies. Veggies, plain okay. veggies, no seasoning. Okay. Just veggies. Again, on the turkey, no seasoning on the turkey. Okay. We we talked about it. Yes. And what about sweet potatoes? Mm, yeah, I'll share a little bit with them. A little bit? Just a little bit. Okay. No uh, marshmallows. Nope. No butter. Nope. And no syrup. So maybe plain after they're cooked before you start to put them in all the sugary, molasses-y, bourbon-y combo, right? Well, you know when they're the cranberries, you know, you can give them a little bit of, I guess, 
The cranberry is good for the urinary tract, right? Cranberry jelly is mostly sugar, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes, yeah, so you can't give and it to And you don't them. even eat that. No, I don't. Okay, so what if we have, like, maybe pocket pets or reptiles? So what if we have them? <laughs> we aren't going to have them, but what if I we know. have them? Maybe we can give uh, our reptiles some plain lettuce? Yes. Okay, that'll probably work. From the salad. From the salad, so they get a little green. Without the dressing. Right, maybe a little green vegetables, too. If yes. If they eat spinach or um, maybe some green beans without all the... Cata- casserole-ish. Because, you know, I don't I don't know if you know this, but, like, w- one of the number one dishes in the country is green bean casserole. Yes. It's really popular here in Florida. Well, it's popular in the Midwest. Yeah. And many people in the Midwest have moved to Florida. Right. So I'm thinking green beans without the onions, without the cream. Yes. And maybe pocket pets can have a little turkey. Yes. Okay. And maybe, if they want it. If they want it. So yeah. don't force it. Because what happens if we if our pets do eat all this rich food? Well, a number of things can happen, but mostly it affects the tummy and the intestine, Mm -hmm. okay? It can be a little toxic in Mm -hmm. some cases, so it can affect the whole individual. But think in terms of vomiting, projectile vomiting, think in consideration of diarrhea. Oh, imagine, Uh, diarrhea? Diarrhea, (laughs) diarrhea. Diarrhea on the holidays when your whole family's there. And you know what? You don't want to have to deal with that. Um, Most of the time when they do that on an instant basis, uh, you can probably kind of control it or manage it at home. (laughs) But many times you got to go to the veterinarian and emergencies on Thanksgiving can be very expensive. Very expensive. Actually, I'm thinking of a time when you were, I wasn't there, I was away traveling, and you were with Carlos and Danielle. Oh, yes. Uh, Danielle is uh, Dr. Fleck's daughter and Carlos is his son-in-law. Yes. And in the right before they sat down to a meal, Hannah started vomiting, our golden retriever, and she's a big time vomiter. She's a big dog, lots of vomit. And it was just disgusting. You told me, I was away but the place was smelly and horrible uh, and you had to uh, clean it up before you ate and off of the carpet's impossible right exactly mm. so mm. you don't want to have that situation and also the other thing too is if your dog gets sick i'm sure those vet bills can be really big right as i mentioned going to the veterinarian on thanksgiving for an emergency will be very very expensive very pricey and and here's the thing. You're going to need that money for Black Friday, <laughs> Cyber Monday shopping, right, Dr. Fleck? <laughs> I would think so. Well, is that it? I think so. Just be reasonable about what you're doing in feeding your pets. I talked to some people, and they look forward to feeding their pets on Thanksgiving. And fortunately, they haven't had a negative experience yet. <laughs> but yet. they can. They can, so especially just, with some of the toy dogs. Just, Just be conscious of what you're doing. Okay. That's it for the Flex Facts for this Thanksgiving. Awesome. Well, more of the pet buzz very soon. Bet you can't wait for my I Likey of the Week. I can. Ed? Any card? What's wrong with the dog? Oh, he's just yakking on a bone. We got it up. Hey, my name is Rory Diamond. I am the CEO of Canines for Warriors. We are the nation's largest provider of service dogs for disabled American veterans. And we are asking everyone to support Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Persons Act, House Bill 3130. Absolutely critical to do this. We require the VA to help organizations like Canines for Warriors serve our disabled veterans with incredible life-saving service dogs and to recover from post-traumatic stress. Please contact your member of Congress to support Puppies Assisting Wounded Service Persons Act, House Bill 3130. I'm Petronology Charlotte Reed with a healthy pet, healthy you tip. There are many reasons that you might have to shelter at home with your pets, such as unsafe air quality, dangerous roads, and or high winds and flying debris, but you have to be prepared. So here are some suggestions. Make sure your pet's inside. If it's unsafe for you to be outside, it's unsafe for him too. Know the location of your pet's emergency go bag. It should have already been stocked with extra food, water, first aid kit, and other essentials your pet needs. Take your pet with you to a room that's safe. The room's location is based on whether you are sheltering from a hurricane, earthquake, tornado, flood, or blizzard. If there's a wildfire, it's best to take your pet and leave the premises immediately. Bring a battery-operated radio to ensure that you can get updates from emergency officials, even if the power goes out and your phone or Internet connection or down. 
if time allows, move your pet's favorite bed or blanket to your safe room so that you can make him as comfortable as possible until the threat passes. Since pets can get restless if cooped up inside in one room, bring items to keep them engaged, such as toys, games, and learning activities. Make sure your pet has a place to relieve himself. Keeping puppy pee pads on hand can be useful for this purpose, as can potty training your dog to go indoors. Have a few disposable litter boxes for cats, too. Make sure to have cleaning supplies on hand in case of an accident. Keep your pet away from the windows. Debris may be flying around during a storm due to high winds. In fact, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention says that flying debris is the most common cause of injury during a hurricane. Be ready for you and your pet to leave at a moment's notice. Keep your dog's leash, crate, or carrier and any necessarily travel gear near the exit. For cats, have a carrier or pop-up shelter and other essentials. Once gone, you can refer to your emergency evacuation plan. You know, pets know when there's panic in the air, so try to remain as calm as possible. This is pet trendologist Charlotte Reed with a healthy pet, healthy you tip. Stay safe. Does your pet have dry, flaky, and itchy skin? Do you find yourself visiting the veterinarian repeatedly because Fido or Fluffy has skin allergies or ear infections? I love animals and want my pets to be healthy. So I asked our vet who recommended EpiPet Ear Cleaner. It's super simple and it even smells good. Every week I use it on both my dog and my cat to gently remove wax and debris. (laughs) I even told my friend Aiden to try EpiPet on his dog Sophie who always had red ears. But not anymore. Now we both have happy and healthy pets. Thanks, EpiPet. Developed by a veterinarian, EpiPet is a revolutionary, high-performance skin and ear care product line made with the finest natural ingredients. EpiPet, for you and your pet, means better pet health. For more information, visit epi-pet.com. Welcome back. You're listening to the Pet Buzz, the best in pet talk radio. I'm pet trendologist Charlotte Reed, and we're here to talk about Thanksgiving today. So now for my I likey of the week. That's the way it has to be, because that's the way I like it. It's genius. I like it. I love it so much. I like it. It's to die for. I like it. It's all about breed pillows. Well, decorators always say that vibrant throw pillows can transform an entire room's decor and deliver a bold statement of color. So on this day, a day when the family's together and all the dog lovers are checking out the National Dog Show, I suggest that you gift every member of the family with a dog breed pillow. So if you're supporting the Frenchies to win the National Dog Show, hey, make sure there's a Frenchie pillow. Or your sister likes a golden retriever or even little cousin John likes that black Labrador. So why don't you have a few pillows either buy them at a store or have them custom made. But don't forget, if that's the case, if we're going to do custom, don't forget to include photos of your dog or everybody in the family's dog. You can check out Shutterfly because they can create great pics with your dog and the whole family. You can also check out MakeCustomGifts.com or even Petsies. That's P-E-T-S-I-E-S dot com. Okay, well, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday are great shopping days because you can get all of your holiday shopping out of the way really quickly. And when you are shopping for pets and pet lovers, getting pet supplies and other gifts on sale really puts you in the holiday spirit. So joining us today is Trey Baj, an accomplished lifestyle journalist and TV commentator who specializes in smart shopping, personal finance, and retail. Thanks so much, Trey, for joining us on the Pet Buzz today. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, I'm curious, in your opinion, how has Black Friday shopping changed over the last few years? Well, for many years, Black Friday was the official kickoff to the holiday shopping season, but we have seen that creeping earlier and earlier into November. So we see deals that are really exciting even the first week of November. So you have more time to look for deals and more opportunities to save. And, you know, I guess you also have Cyber Monday because Cyber Monday is really a recent addition. I mean, Black Friday has been around for a really long time from what I understand. But Cyber Monday is fairly new. Correct. So Black Friday has been around for decades, but Cyber Monday has only been around since 2005. 
and it was created by the National Retail Federation, and it took some time to catch on, but now it is a very exciting sales day for online shoppers. Plus, you have league deals and deals starting earlier and earlier, and then these early bird specials where you ha- or you have to come into the stores, and, and then, of course, there's the crazy fighting, right, sometimes? Well, hopefully, <laughs> we won't have so much fighting this year. What I've seen is a reduction in the drama on Black Friday itself, simply because more consumers are shopping online that day. So the foot traffic in for the Black Friday stores tends to be a little bit lighter, and therefore we have less drama. Okay. So next big question that everyone always wants to know, are the deals really that good? In many cases, they can be. It just depends on what you're looking for. But the deals can range anywhere from 5% off, which, you know, who cares about that, but all the way through to clearance level deals at 75% off. Wow. So that's good. Okay. So there's so many deals and so much stuff to look at. I mean, how do you organize your shopping? Do you make a list? Do you decide what you really want? I mean, so like if I'm a pet owner, maybe I want that like really expensive Dyson pet back or something. Yeah, so that's a great question. My suggestion for pet owners would be to make a list of the things that you normally need because it is a good time to stock up, but then also make a list of a couple of those aspirational items like that expensive pet back or pet carrier and look for deals on those items as well. That's a great point. I mean, that is like really great information. So separate your list. So for example, we know a lot of times we might see food on sale at certain stores and that's kind of an essential versus your really fancy, beautiful cat tree. Okay, great advice. Well, if you've just joined us, I'm talking with Trey Baj, a shopping expert about Black Friday steals and deals as well as Cyber Monday. Well, before and during, I guess you could say before, during, And after Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and Cyber Monday, what are generally the best deals for for pet owners? Well, I would say anything in the electronic space. So, of course, we mentioned vacuums and any other electronic items that you'd be interested in for your pets, if it's uh, a camera, security cameras for the house, things like that. Look for deals there because the deals should be good. Uh, my recommendation would be to set a deal alert for an expensive item like that. Ah. That would be on, on a site like slickdeals.net, which is super helpful to you enter the name of the item and then you're alerted if that item goes on sale. Wait, so wait, way hold on one second. I got to write that down, everybody. <laughs> slickdeals.net. Okay, got that. That's a great, great tip. Okay, slickdeals.net. And it's spelled yeah. S-L-I-C-K-D-E-A-L-S. Dot net, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's great for setting a deal alert for an expensive item. And then another little trick is you can look on a site like Gift Card Granny for discounted gift cards that you could then shop with. So they do have discounted gift cards with a cash back option from PetSmart. And so if you see something at PetSmart that you're looking for, you could save a little bit more by shopping with a discounted gift card. That's awesome. Gift card granny. And so many people don't give gifts. They just think it's a lot easier to give a gift card. You know, maybe it's your butcher who has a dog. I say that because my butcher has a dog and I always give him a gift card for his two Wheatons. So definitely gift card granny. Okay. Some of the best places to go in store if I want to deal with the craziness. Well, you know, I would do your favorite big pet store like your Petco, your PetSmart. They will have really exciting deals. I am seeing some interesting deals already on Petco, uh, but PetSmart has not released their Black Black Friday deals yet. Um, But those stores will be really busy and fun, and, of course, you can bring your pets to shop with you. Okay, so that was my next question. Well, if I'm going to a Walmart or a Target, I'll probably see some good deals on food, too, because, you know, those stores buy in bulk. And then, of course, online there's Chewy's, which is a favorite place for a lot of people to shop on. I think if you're going to Walmart and Target, just leave the dog at home, because I think those stores are going to be busy all day. But, hey, you never know. You might want to, like, check out the pet aisle. Maybe the pet aisle won't be as crazy as uh, the TV aisle or the furniture aisle. But, um, really, I think it's just about having a good time. You know, I don't know. I'm going to ask you, because, you know, a lot of people in this pet space, tray are really concerned about millennial shopping. Millennial shopping, we hear it all the time. All the surveys talk about millennial shopping. So, Trey, do you think you're going to see more of a millennial presence at some of the stores? Because I I, I gather they like the experience of it all. That's 
absolutely correct. I keep hearing about this over and over. So many studies are being done on what millennials like. And I'm not quite sure why millennials are so important because I'm a Gen Xer myself. But what millennials do like are experiences. And so what I think is going to happen around Black Friday, we might see a little bit of an uptick in foot traffic specifically by millennials. And so retailers will be offering fun in-store things to keep those millennials happy. So maybe there'll be um, a fun gift wrapping workshop or activities for your kids or perhaps in your pet stores, activities for your pets. So keep your eyes peeled for fun things like that on Black Friday. And, and how do I just look at my favorite stores for that kind of inf- for that kind of workshop or something? Because a gift wrapping workshop sounds really great. And I have to tell you, I wrap all of my gifts in really nice pet themed gift paper. <laughs> yeah, so you're ahead of the game. I would say um, you probably have your gift wrapping game down. But yes, what I would do is if you do have a favorite store that you like to go to, check out their website and see if they're offering something fun on Black Friday in store, even call, especially if it's a local pet store. They might be having some fun activities planned, but they may not be uh, savvy enough to have a website, but the store owner or one of the cashiers might be able to inform you about the fun things that they have planned over that weekend. Well, I think this is such great information. I'm going to get my game on, slickdeals.net, gift card granny. I love it. Trey, will you come back again? Of course, I'm always happy to. Okay, great. Everyone, that was shopping expert Trey Baj talking about Black Friday through Cyber Monday shopping. Up next, we're talking about what global news is going to affect us on Thanksgiving Day. You are listening to The Pet Buzz with pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and veterinarian Dr. Michael Fleck. We would love to communicate with you via social media. Use The Pet Buzz social media channels on Twitter and Facebook to make a comment or ask a question. Post a picture of your pet on Instagram and tell us about his or her unique personality. You can also write to us at team at thepetbuzz.com. For more information about our show, our guests, and buzzworthy freebies, visit us at thepetbuzz.com. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Ooh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Shrulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. I'm pet trendologist Charlotte Reed, and we are urban, suburban, and country. You know, Thanksgiving Day, November 28th, is the cheapest day of the year to fly. It's always cheaper because no one wants to fly on Thanksgiving. So if you're going to be flying with your dog or cat, maybe you should consider Thanksgiving Day. Or if you're flying at the last minute and you haven't bought your ticket yet, hey, maybe that's the day for you and your pet to fly. But make sure that you fly early in the morning. and That way you don't miss a moment of the food feast. And really, a relatively cheap day to return home is going to be on Saturday, November 30th. Now, one more little news bit. Let's talk about Macy's Thanksgiving parade. Well, some of the try and true favorite floats are back again this year. Snoopy's Doghouse, Tom Turkey, Rockin' Flamingo, and Rockin' Lobster floats. Doc Fleck and I, we love the animal floats the best, and I'm sure you will too. So don't miss the Macy's Day Parade. Check it out in the morning and then right after the National Dog Show. And then, of course, the family can relax, have a few drinks, and watch some football. Let's talk about doing a little good and giving thanks for the blessings that we receive. Thanksgiving. There's something special about this holiday that focuses on abundance and thankfulness. You know, as a result, it focuses on gratefulness, happiness, as well as the well-being of others. That's probably why Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. And as Americans around the country are preparing for their Thanksgiving celebrations, it's also important to remember that there are thousands of homeless and neglected animals out there. Some are on the streets, 
Others are stressed in shelters. That's why I'm asking you to open your hearts to animals this holiday by giving your time, your attention, and your support in any way possible. And joining us today to talk about how we can help pets in need is my special friend, a mentor to me, and a very kind individual, Mr. Mike Arms. Mike Arms is president of the Helen Woodward Animal Center. He's a pioneer in the animal welfare industry. Mike is credited, believe it or not, in the last 40 years of saving the lives of millions of orphan animals, as well as creating innovative and educational programs to help animals throughout the world. And as a result of his efforts, his deeds, Helen Woodward Animal Center is known as the animal shelter of the future. Mike, thanks so much for joining the show and and, and being with us. I'm really glad you have me, Charlotte. So tell us, simple question, how can we help animals this holiday? Yeah, I think the best way, one, adopt a pet rather than go out and buy one. If you can't do that, you can donate time and come down and walk and pet these often pets. They would love it. If you can't do that, donate to your local facility so they can hire more people to help these orphans. Those are the best ways you can help. Okay, that's great. And, you know, you know, one of the things that I, I've come to realize um, really since knowing you and going to your conferences, is that people don't realize how hard these animal shelter workers work. You know, how can we recognize them during holiday time? I'm glad you asked that, Charlotte, because these people are so overworked. They're so stressed. People don't realize the work they have to do is very physical and stressful. And you know what? If you can't even come down and thank them, or even, you know, you might want to give them a gift card for a free lunch because most of them make minimum wage, can't take care of things for their family. But if they got a gift card to go out and get some groceries or have a better Thanksgiving, you would make somebody extremely happy. You know, I think that's a great idea. And I, and actually, we just found this site called Gift Card Granny. So you can actually look up gift cards and drop them off at your local shelter uh, for the employees who work there. And if you're affiliated with a shelter, just put them in the hands of the employees. That's always a good thing to do. And just say thank you for your hard work. And, and we appreciate what you do. Correct? Do you know that would make their holidays really remembering they would appreciate that more than anyone would realize. And thank you, Charlotte, for even bringing that up. Well, good, good. I got a gold star from you. I'm always happy when I get a gold star from you. Okay, so a lot of families, they want to do something good over the weekend. They want to go to, and they want to work with animals. They want to help shelters. What do you suggest they do? Should they do training beforehand? Should they stop by? What? How does that work? Well, most of the organizations now do have training uh, methodology, if somebody wants to volunteer, they put them through training first, how to handle a pet, how to hold a pet, how to walk a pet. And that's what you want to learn, how to do it the right way so you and the pet have a wonderful experience. Okay, so you guys still have time because we're bef- it's before Thanksgiving. So maybe you can call your local shelter today, find out if they have any training. Maybe you could start on Thanksgiving weekend or even between Thanksgiving and the holidays. You know, and I, I guarantee your family is going to love it and they're going to want to continue to do it at least once a month, once a week. And also, it's a great way for your family to have some family time together, to do some work for a good cause, but really be together. How many times do you really sit down at the kitchen table or have conversations or do something for other people? So getting involved in your local shelter would be a great project for kids of all ages and, of course, at parents. And the other thing is you also get to meet some new friends and family while you're there, people who love animals. So, um, you know, if Mike suggested, it's going to be a great thing, right? I agree. And if you're a stay-at-home person and you have the time, you might want to consider fostering a newborn puppy or a newborn kitten and helping them get ready for adoption. Great, great idea. Okay. So a lot of folks don't have the time, but they want to give something. How do they do it? Who do they call at their local well, shelter? They, they should call their local shelter and ask for somebody that probably works in the development department or in the adoptions department. Most of these places, they run on a shoestring budget. You might want to go and buy a bag of food and bring it down there. You might want to go get some cans of food and bring it down there. You know, you can make the pets and the people so happy by opening up your heart and open up your wallet just to help pets. So not everyone has money. 
but they might have skills. Right. Uh, what about that? Sure. And the skills, they could always use people to answer phones, people to um, do paperwork for them. Every organization has a need for volunteers, and they'll find the right place for you. It's just like a job application. We use your skills to the best of our ability to make it a good experience for you and for us. You know, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, where I live in Florida, we have a lot of seniors here, and maybe they can't work with the animals like they used to. Maybe they take blood thinners, maybe they have skin problems, but they still want to help. They still love animals. So a lot of them answer the phone. A lot of them, you know, have little food drives once a month where they collect food from their friends and they drop it off at the shelters. So if you do love animals, there's something that you can definitely do. You can get involved in. And I think the best part these days is you have the opportunity not only to do something good for animals, but also to meet some new and ex- interesting people that have the same interests, correct? That is correct. And a lot of these places have their own, like, shops, like a gift shop that you would find in a hospital. And you can be a volunteer in the gift shop. There's so many things that you can do that you would feel good about, and it would be really helping that organization. Great. Now, let's talk a little bit about adoption, because you are the man, Home for the Holidays program. Mm-hmm. So... Talk about adoption. Like, but you know, I think it's exciting to think about having a pet, but it's a good idea to prep for that, correct? There is no question about that. You know, they can't just do it on the spur of the moment and impulse. They have to remember that if you get a young animal, this could be a 15, 16 year commitment, and you have to be willing to do that. You know, nobody has a crystal ball, but you do have the time to think about can you really take care of a that properly for the next 15 years. So what else, Mike? What else do we need to know? Well, you want to know that when you're adopting a pet, think about the expenses of it. You know, can you really afford it? Can you afford quality food? Can you afford veterinarian care? Can you afford these things without putting stress on your family or your budget? Think about it very seriously because it is a serious thing. This is a living pet that's going to come into your home for the next 15 years. Can you properly care for it? Great last point. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Same to you, my good friend. (laughs) Well, unfortunately, we've had a great show, but it's time to wrap it up. Before we go, we want to give you a preview for next week's show. Next week, we're going to talk about the psychological benefits of getting a pet. That's going to be a really interesting conversation, as well as decorating the Christmas tree. You know, we always have a dog or cat or pet themed Christmas tree. So we're going to have a decorator talking about how to decorate our house, our dog and cat house. That should be a lot of fun. And of course, there's always going to be more. Well, in this episode, we want to give thanks to John O'Hurley, Trey Baj, and Mike Arms. And we almost must say thank you. A big thank you to our sponsor, the Animal Medical Center of Bradenton and EpiPet, making better skin coat and ear care products for healthier pets everywhere. So if you have a question, write to us at thepetfuzz.com. We'll cover it on next week's show. And if you've missed any portion of this great Thanksgiving show, visit our social media channels as well as your favorite streaming channels and listen to the linked podcast on Monday morning. Plenty of time before Thanksgiving. And most importantly, remember, we're here each week to help you take better care of your pets. Peace out and pet love. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Pet Buzz. The Pet Buzz is hosted by the dynamic pet duo, pet trendologist Charlotte Reed and Dr. Michael Fleck. Tune in each week for the latest 411 on everything pet related. Visit our website at www.thepetbuzz.com. Learn more about us, the show, and our guests.